The 2014 Southland Conference Media Days were held here in Lake Charles at La Berge Casino. The favorite this season, the defending champion, Southeastern, according to the media. McNeese State is picked second. Houston Baptist, in their first full season in the Southland Conference, excited about getting things started. This first game for the new season in this new stadium, it's going to be it's going to be one amped up night for us. We're going to be ready, ready to roll and just go pound to McMurray. Every week you play, you're making history. And that's just history with the fans, history with the school, history with the other, other opponents. And so we're really excited for the opportunity and be able to play in front of our home fans. They can walk from their dorms to come to the stadium. That would be a great experience. I think as a coach, it's impossible to convey how gratifying it is that when you have an administration that shares a love and a passion for the game that you coach. And, and where that really manifests itself is a commitment that Dr. Sloan and Steve Maniaccio would make uh, in, in, in the work ethic it takes to go out and build that donor group of individuals uh, to fund a multi-million dollar stadium. Uh, it leaves you very humble as a coach, very appreciative. I can't wait to that first ball game. I think it's be something to, that will separate us from many startup football programs that in two years you could play on campus. Your line, how important is that offensive line, that defensive line, you know, being big up front, knowing that the game is pretty much one of the trenches, especially when you're just getting started. Our guys are so much stronger. I mean, the, the thickness, the girth, the strength level, we are a significantly different looking group of kids. And that goes back to their hard work and, and the job of our coaches. Let's talk about your defense. What, uh, what do you think is going to be the key to being successful defensively? Defensively, I think as long, as long as we can have a strong front, be able to fight those big horses on the other side, if they can get going, that just frees up everybody else on in the backside to make plays and become a great defense. On defense, if you can create penetration, if you can uh, not get knocked off the ball, and you can do things to be stout at the point of attack because of the size and the girth and the effectiveness of those interior guys. Everything else, your, your linebackers look like all Americans because they stay clean. A junior college transfer out of Northeast Oklahoma, Josh Jones, is a tremendous pass rusher, great athlete, and he'll give us a, a total different dimension coming off the edge than what we really had last year. We're talking about the speed element, we went out and the, 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 the Baylor cornerback transfer, Tyler Stevenson, is a great player. He started three years at Baylor, freshman All-American, and he's been there, done that. And he comes in and very likely could end up uh, being one of the very top corners in our conference. I think that's a, a given. And, uh, and then Eric Amako, transfer corner from University of Oregon, that's a dynamic player at Arlington Martin High School uh, that want to come back home to Texas, that uh, was factoring into Oregon's plans in the secondary. So having two dynamic BCS corners come in your programs overnight, that's a, that's a major, major game changer. Kadarius Baker, let's talk about him. What does he uh, mean for your program? How much has he progressed from last year? Because I think going into week one, maybe you weren't sure he could start, and yet he had to step up right away, and he did an admir admirable job. Yeah, you know, I think going into the last season, uh, we thought that uh, Jonathan Fleming and Kadarius Baker were, were pretty comparable uh, when we finished fall camp. We felt like uh, uh, Jonathan had been a little bit more older uh, Maybe that was uh, enough of a nod to give him a chance to start that, that open ball game. Uh, Kadaris against Sam Houston under a very tough environment, probably as tough of an environment you could ever put a quarterback in, a young offensive line against a uh, national contender. You know, it's a pretty tough matchup. And uh, he showed poise, and, he, and I thought he showed a lot of character and control. I thought that Kadaris showed uh, uh, continued growth as a player. I think his ability, his deep ball throwing ability has improved, which is an area that we had challenged him, and throwing the ball on timing and, and been able to work the mental decision-making process in the faster uh, timeline where we're challenged. And I think in the spring, he showed that he had uh, not only improved, but uh, had, had, had improved at, at a nice level. What we have found, though, is that Jonathan Fleming has also improved. And that's a good news for our program because we feel like we have competition to quarterback. Running back position was great for you last year. Uh, just seeing Craig Bell and uh, and B.J. Kelly and those guys. Tell me about how important it is to, you know, if, if you don't quite have the offensive line where you want them, you, you need to have a running back who could make some cutbacks and make some decisions to, to avoid some tackles. Uh, absolutely. I, you know, we came away feeling like probably our running back core was uh, probably the most accomplished segment within our team. We thought that the, the talent level there is very competitive to begin with. 
What was interesting is uh, through spring ball, uh, Larry Day became our best running back. And so right now, if we were to start a game today, Larry Day would be our starter. I think our running game, uh, we've really seen us incorporate more of a blend between the one back and a two back offense, staying within a gun principle. And I think we've done, we've done some things to really refine tempo and been able to change gears. Kenneth Bibbins, oh my goodness. Hey, I tapped him on the shoulder and I felt like, man, I thought you were big last year. You're, you're even more cut and, you know, and bigger this year. That's what it takes. I mean, it, if you want to play at this level, you need to see that kind of, you know, that bulk, that bulkiness, like you were talking about, the players developing in the weight room and all that. And he's one guy that really looks like he could be at a whole new level. Kenneth, his, his DNA is so unique. You have a guy that's got great length. He's so athletic. His ball skills in the receiving element are, uh, there'll be few tight ends in the state of Texas they'll have some of his ball skills. Um, his movement ability and us being able to, we're, he's one of the central guys that we're kind of growing our offense around. We're going to do a lot of different things. We're asking him to kind of be three different kind of guys, a guy that can detach, be like a wide receiver, a guy who can wire himself to the offensive line to create complexity in the running game, and then to build a guy that we move around in the backfield. Tell me about Vic Sheely as a head coach. What have you seen, uh, not only last year, but in the off season with the workouts as he prepares you guys for a year, let's call it what it is, year one. Uh, year one, I mean, I've been a lot, around a lot of great coaches from coming from Houston, around Kevin Sumlin, around Cliff Kingsbury, Tony Levine, and Coach, Levine, I mean, Coach Sheely's right up there with him, I feel. He's prepared us uh, amazingly just from all season workouts, just from taking care of our bodies better, just giving the days to rest, because rest is important. And I feel like he's up there with some of the great coaches and the sky's the limit for Coach Shealy. Our players are just working their tails off and they can't wait to go play. I know, and, and to win uh, our first home ball game if we're, if we're fortunate to do that, uh, it'll be a story that many of us will talk about for a while. Thank you so much. Thank Always you. a pleasure talking to you.